with me today in the studio is two great women of God of our time, anointed and loaded to listen to us on today's episode. Professor Natasha Okwendo, all the way from Florida, United States of America, as well as Pastor Mary Dan Paul, all the way from Kaduna, Nigeria. These two uh, anointed women of God will be a blessing to us on topic. A pastor's wife also become a pastor because we see a lot of things now days where a pastor will just marry a really wife to also a pastor. A lot of things happen after the pastor is called home. Lord, you see, the woman of God takes over the entire ministry and the overall head. We will see the Lord pray because so many, uh, uh, you know, so pastors believe that the pastor's wife should not automatically become the head of the church. These are some of the controversial issues that we're going to be dealing with this morning or this afternoon, depending on the nation you're connecting from. And so I'd like you to stay tuned if you're watching from your TV set. We have some numbers on the TV set. You could reach out your questions or contribution. If you're watching us on any social media platform, feel free to send in your questions as we have my team in the house today will be asking uh, this question. So as a more introduce, I'm going to be bringing up Prophetess Natasha Okwendo to say hi to our viewers around the world. So woman of God, can you tell me? the viewers around the world. All right, I think uh, she's still getting set. All right, while we're waiting for Prophetess Natasha Quindle to do that, I'd like to bring up Pastor Mary Dan Paul to say hi to God's people. We have over 400 million viewers and so many on um, on all the social media platforms. So Pastor Mary, can you say hi to God's people? Hello, great people of God. This is Mary Dan Paul Fredericks. Um, I'm tuning in from Kaduna, Nigeria. It's amazing and a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to having with you this day. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, woman of God. All right, can we have Prophetess Natasha all the way from Florida, United States of America, say hi to our viewers around the world. Okay, I think we're going to just proceed. All right, uh, the first question we have on our list going to Pastor Mary uh, Dan Paul is, must a pastor's wife become a pastor? What is your view on this one, please? Praise God. Um, thank you very much, Bishop Ibu, for having me here. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you for the honor and the privilege to be here this day. Um, the question is, uh, must a pastor's um, wife become a pastor or be a pastor? Um, the word must um, is a no. A pastor's wife must not be a pastor. Um, I want us to understand that first and foremost, um, before um, she's married to a pastor, she's first a born again child of God. She also has her personal dealings with God. Um, she also has her personal call. Um, God may have called her into any of the other fivefold ministries. Um, she could be a teacher, she could be a pastor, she could be an evangelist. Um, she could be a prophet, a prophetess, and so it is a no. Um, but um, that she's married to a pastor, she would always have um, the grace to carry out pastoral function. And I want us to get something right here. You know, when we talk about um, must a pastor's wife become a pastor, most times what or where people uh, major their attention at is on the preaching aspect or the teaching aspect of it, you know, the pulpits, you know, standing on a Sunday service or on a Tuesday service and then sharing God's word. So people always see it from that aspect. But you and I know, um, Bishop, Bishop, that um, 
Um, pastoring is much more than that. Pastoring is not just about preaching and teaching. Um, there are other uh, pastoral activities or engagements that a pastor is involved in. He's involved in praying, in counseling the people, he's involved in nurturing the people, he's involved in shepherding the people, you know, he's involved in so many other things. So these things, the pastor's wife can also be involved in it. Those are, are pastoral activities um, that takes place in a pastor's life. She may not necessarily be teaching and preaching on a Sunday service like the case um, may be, um, she may not be doing that, but she's involved in pastoral activities. She's involved in talking with the women. She's involved in um, um, uh, counseling the younger women, helping the younger women in their marital lives. She's involved in teaching the children. She's involved in the youth department. She's involved in the prayer band. She's involved in um, visitation, visiting um, uh, members. She's involved in taking care of the first timers in church and many other things that a pastor would do. So his wife can be, can be involved in those things. So it's not necessarily that she must be a pastor, as the case may be. Like we'll always say, a pastor called into preaching and teaching, like people will always expect. Because that is where people always get it wrong. Why is she preaching? Why is she teaching? Is she called to do that? Is it because her husband is into ministry and that is why she's also teaching on a Sunday or she's also teaching on a Tuesday? So she must not necessarily be a pastor. And of course, she may be called into that ministry. But I also want you to know that as she begins to get involved in these pastoral activities, the grace of pastoring can all actually come upon her. And then before you know it, she begins to mm. teach to and she begins to preach to. And of course, into the ministry of reconciliation and preaching God's word. So there's really nothing if she gets to preach one or two times or whenever the husband is not around or whenever um, um, the opportunity presents itself, it is not a must that she must be a pastor. Thank you, sir. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a powerful one coming from Pastor Mary Paul. Her take is that the pastor's wife mustn't be a pastor but by virtue of marriage, a pastor carries a pastoral role upon her. She has a lot of things she needs to do to support her husband's ministry. And I want more time, I want to bring up uh, Prophetess Natasha Okwendo. If you're there, I'd like you to say hi to God's people. We have. Hello, hello, hello. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So, Prophetess Natasha, you want to weigh in on the first question, must a pastor's wife become a pastor? What's your take on this first question? Um, I don't believe that she has to carry the title, the weight of the title. Um, if her husband is a pastor or senior pastor, she is to support him. Um, but then you have some demographics where both uh, carry the title of parent pastor together um, but the woman doesn't have to necessarily have that title um, no to be honest only the grace only the grace is necessary and being that you're one being that you're married and you're one that grace is going to be sufficient in the areas that she needs to support God is going to give the grace in the areas or the position that she needs to support in um, and that's vice versa, I believe. I believe that God um, applies the grace. If he needs that support in administration, then God will grant grace for administration if they can't afford to hire somebody, <laughs> per se. But I believe that that woman, she doesn't necessarily have to have a, a pastoral title to operate in a grace to support the pastor. Wow. I can't hear him again. I can't hear him. Oh. Super amazing that she doesn't have to pastor, but she has grace by virtue of her relationship as the wife of the pastor. She will carry grace and also support the whole carry ministry. We 
Talking to the word of God spoke about than being a weaker vessel, we should treat her like a weaker vessel. By chance, this woman happens to become a pastor by a religious husband. Are we going to say that because the word of God calls the woman a weaker vessel, that she's going to be a pastor? Correct? And do you agree with that? Mary, the whole you run away in this, is she going to be a weaker pastor? Because the word of God calls her a weaker vessel, or your team is equal to the task. Well, um, Bishop, no, I don't think so. Um, uh, Bob describes the woman as a weaker vessel. He was just trying to explain how tender the woman is, how her nature is, how soft she can be, how caring she can be, how loving she can be you know she's not as hard we mean hard not in terms of capacity not in terms of strength not in terms of ability not in of, um um the ability to do something her nature her frame frame her makeup you understand um the scripture was just trying to say the woman is a softer person a softer being um she's emotional um she takes her time she thinks over things she carries those things out she's not like a man who is quick to act without thinking twice you understand she's wonderfully and beautifully made in god's nature you know she just exhibits the other loving and uh, the tender side of god that that is what God was trying to explain here. So no, um, being described as a weaker vessel does not weaker vessel does not mean that she cannot carry out certain things that um, is going to affect her place in ministry or it's going to make her um, um, uh, unable to do certain things when it comes to ministry. No, a woman is a very strong person. In fact, um, the Bible says that she's created as a helpmate of the man. So what is that? She has all it takes to help the man. I mean, weak person cannot help another person. She's loaded, she's strong, she's energized, she has the capacity, she's well endowed, she's well built, she has the Holy Spirit. And then remember that we do not have a female Holy Spirit and a masculine Holy Spirit. It's one Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit in the woman is the same Holy Spirit in the man. So the woman can do all of Christ that strengthens her. So she's not a weak person by that day. Thank you, sir. Wow, wow. I love that. Start from Pastor Mary. There's no female spirit, neither is there male Holy Spirit. The spirit of God in a man, the same spirit in a woman. What a man of God can do, a woman of God can do better. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, this question is coming from Malawi, and the person asking the is one Pastor Stefano. Of Lasso, forgive me, pronounce your name well. All right, the next question is going to be uh, Natasha Okwendo. Uh, Pastor Stephen from Malawi said he watched a uh, introductory video where you mentioned that you've been in ministry for over 20 years now. He want to know if you've experienced some challenges in ministry as a woman and how were you to overcome these challenges in ministry. So, Prophet Natasha. Okay, you want to say something about? Um, yes, I have definitely experienced many challenges in ministry. Um, many times God allowed me to be on stage, and sometimes I was that woman um, at an event as speaking, meaning I would be. Those were different challenges and also um, different challenges with uh, congregants. You mean being able to be uh, a voice to being able to
through uh, learning. That came through learning. That came through, uh, you know, knowing how to rebuke, knowing how to correct. You get what I'm saying? In such a way that where the grace of God would be there and it would be respected just as much as my husband's, right? And so um, the end of uh, the arena, in the beginning stages, for me, it was really, really rough. Um, like I say, back to, I've, I've been on TV programs where I would be the only woman um, on the roster. And, you know, you're in that as a man. And so, you know, it could be a little bit intimidating at first. But once, once God's grace and his anointing is revealed, and a lot of times we cannot combat that, if that makes sense. Um, once, once we see that God's anointing and his presence is there, um, the Holy Spirit is there, and he is doing what he does with no respecter of person, then we can't combat that. We have to give God the glory, right? Um, so the many challenges, I would say, is definitely learning how to... Um, exercise my authority um, among the sheep and to be well respected and not have a, a role of respect, if that makes sense. Wow. But to view us as we're one wow. and that we're Thank God's you. leaders and we're God's leaders um, and to receive us as that. That took, that took some cultivating. That took me being consistent in who I am in Christ, if that makes sense. That took me being that example and that representative, right? And not so much as verbally trying to push that authority, but allowing the word of God to be revealing the people consistently. Wow, wow, that's super amazing. So, Pastor Stefano, if you're watching us all the way from the nation Malawi, I hope that answers your question. You just had uh, Prophetess Natasha say, Yeah, she has experienced a lot of challenges, but she's been able to use them to learn and to establish, you know, the authority Christ made in her in order to better the sheep that God has given to her. Afterward, she's been able to turn the lemon, uh, the challenges through to her to lemons and then make a good out of it. We're going to hear more from her on this same program, but let me quickly send this next one to Pastor Mary Don Paul. Pastor Mary Don Paul, you have been the first, one of the strongest women ministry, uh, the pastor, uh, my man, and the wife of the pastor there about. Can you tell us more about the ministry? What inspired you to, to, to begin to, you know, look into pastor's wife and then to become better? And tell us, how have you been able to support your husband to raise that gigantic church in Kaduna, the mighty cathedral God has given to you? Tell us your experience in uh, ministry as the, as the pastor's wife. Okay, thank you. Praise God. Um... Uh, the vision the pastor, your pastor, my man, was um, given to me by God. I remember um, I was actually in bed lying down. And um, that was about the time I was struggling. Like I was trying to see how I could fit into um, the new assignment that God had given to my husband. I was trying to, I was not okay with the people accept me because the truth of the matter, he was the one who was called to start the work. Yes, I married him as a pastor, but at that time he was an associate pastor on the entry so But when he came and discussed with me that it was time to go into um, the work fully, what God has asked him to do, it was it was a whole new thing for me because it's something that I have never done before, and I was trying to see how I could fit in. You know, I kept talking to myself, and I was like speaking to myself aloud. How am I going to cope? Where do I start from? Will I be accepted? Will I be able to function properly and all of that? And I heard the Holy Spirit begin to say to me, um, what um, if a woman is married to a medical doctor? What is expected of her? And I said, she's expected to just be a good wife to the medical doctor. And he said, um, if a woman is married to a military man, what is expected of her? And I said, she's expected to be a good wife to him also. And and there are times that he may be posted out of his base and that means um, for her she will have to be the mother she will have to be the, the children at the same time the husband will not always be there like the medical doctor too who will always go on call 
And so he asked, um, if a woman is married to a pastor, what is she expected to do? And I said, she's expected to just be a good wife. And he said, that is all I expect you to be, just a wife. And who is the pastor you? The man that you're married to. And I said, he's the man that I'm married to. He's my man. So it came, the pastor. He's the pastor. He's also your pastor. But he's also your man. So the first thing is to relate with him from that place of being your man, being your husband. Because when, when God created me and sent me to him, he created and sent me to him as a helpmate. So all I'm supposed to do is just help him, support him. And as I keep helping and supporting him, then the work of ministry, the act of ministry will begin to open and pave way for me. I'll begin to learn that the grace will begin to come upon me and every other thing will fall into place. So I was like, wow, so all I needed to do is to just be a good wife. So it's the pastor, your pastor, he is my man. Well, I decided to take it further, just further from where I am because I realized that, that most women uh, must have been in my shoes. They, may, they must be, or they may be asking the same questions that I was asking. Some of them are finding it difficult to enter the ministry. Some of them are finding it difficult to be accepted by the congregation. They don't know how to go about it. Some of them are not educated. They feel okay. People, their, 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 the congregation is going to look down on them. Some of them feel they are not able. Do you understand? So um, the, the the vision came for me to create a platform, a community. That's why you always hear me say it's a supportive community. The aim is to support the pastor's wife to uh, to help her carry out what God has asked her husband to do through her and to do it very well. Be a support to her husband and then to make her realize that it's not about her, it's about her husband, it's not about the congregation, it's about God and her husband. So all she needs to have in mind is one is about God. God has my husband into an assignment, he's giving him an assignment, and my husband will have to succeed. And because I mean his life, everything necessary to ensure that he succeeds. I'm going to support him, I'm going to, to pray for him. I'm going to visit the people with him. I'm going to appear when I need to appear. I'm just going to be there for him to ensure that the work in his hands, that the work that God has asked him to do, that that work will prosper. So that is what the platform, the past, your pastor, my man, is all about. It's a supportive community. So what we do is that we hold conferences here where we tend to build the capacity, build capacity of the pastor's wife. There's, like I said when I was talking earlier on, there's a lot that pastoring has to do with. It has to do with speaking, it has to do with presentation, it has to do with counseling, it has to do with praying, it has to do with um, uh, being responsive to the people, it has to be do with uh, your being available. Try to see how we can build um, these women in these different areas and capacity, build their capacity so that they can they can function properly. You understand, function properly, and also to let them understand that they are not alone. We're a community of women, and then we are here to support one another and to see that what God has um, God us much. to do definitely prospers. So that is what the wow. Answer. Wow! Wow! All right, viewers around the world, you just had a very powerful one from Pastor Mary Dan Paul about the pastor, uh, my pastor, my man. So you can sign pastor. up in that ministry mm -hmm. and you're going to get uh, more strength. And okay, quickly, I'll go to Prophet Elisha Quinto. A woman of God, I've known you for over 10 years. I've followed your ministry. And for some years back, you've been preaching to us on Zion Train. When I had a group of musicians, you know, competing to get support ministerially. And then we have also had so many of your on Zion train here on Sprint Network TV, like the prayer machine. I saw you and your husband have been cooperatively, you know, building a tribe. Is it three to seven tribe or something like that? Now, tell us, a woman of God, when a woman begins to experience antagonism, especially from her husband, like in Africa, we've seen a lot of women of God that have promising future, they have great ministry, but all of a sudden they went out of limelight because the husband was not too okay with so the exposure the woman is getting, he's not okay with the growth she's having, he's not comfortable, he's not settled with the speed the woman is 
top, it begins to fight you. Now, what would be your advice to a woman of God who has agonism from her husband? She quit the ministry for the husband, or she made most of the husband for the ministry. But for you, I've seen your husband support you, like in America, we've seen so many husbands, you know, support their wives, but now we face these challenges. So what would be your counsel to women around here in Africa and other parts of the world when they begin to experience this challenge? How would you want them to solve this problem? Well, the first thing I want to testify just a little about how it came about for me to really move in ministry. Um, first and foremost, it seems as though God spoke to the men in my life first, which was my apostle at the time. Um, that he had me uh, to the nations. And he prophesied this over my life in front of the entire congregation. Um, when he prophesied that, the doors begin to, uh, the process began to start. Um, God ministered to my husband. This is how, how my husband, uh, and literally he was another voice that prophesied to me. So God used the authorities that were in my life and they were male to prophesy into my life about what I am now doing and experiencing. Um, my husband felt it so strongly um, to the point that many times because of warfare and things of that nature, I wanted to quit. Many times I've said that I just, I can't take it. I want to quit. And he would encourage me and, and pray and lay hands and rebuke the enemy off of me. Literally, he said, no, I know what God should know what God said concerning you. And so I said, See, God gave a grace that was sufficient for me to operate by giving my husband the revelation so there will be no discrepancy about what I am to do within this mission or within this vision, right? So um, I said that, that to say, and I want to touch this about the weaker vessel. So I just gave, gave that testimony myself how I wanted to quit. Right before the Bible says about the woman being the weaker vessel, it says for the husband to handle her according to knowledge. And so, husband being that he knows me, he knows that I love the Lord, he knows that I want to obey God. So, he to handle me in that instance of me wanting to quit according to knowledge, meaning he knew what God's purpose or plan was concerning turning me and how he wanted to use me and so he would rebuke the enemy you get what i'm saying uh emotionally sometimes yeah that's getting to know us as women uh what makes us tick what sparks emotions that may not be uh, healthy at the time or or where you feel like you're having a breakdown now i be really really honest there come times in ministry where you want to give up or you want to have just that meltdown but the grace of God is sufficient in all things because even in that, God is cultivating us. He's cultivating us with his seed. He's unstoppable. He's greater is he within us than he that is in the world. And he reminds us as we're going through the process of being made like in his image that we need him, right? And so I said that, all of that to say, me personally, I don't believe you just give up your marriage or and run to your ministry. You get what I'm saying? I believe you should allow God to bring you through the process because he knows how to tie everything in like it should. Um, and I'm saying this because it, and it depends on the individual, right? It depends on the woman herself and her makeup and her character. And, and the way she navigates. I've seen so many women, I've counseled uh, women pastors, women leaders, uh, first ladies, um, just regular women in the congregation and all of that. And what I have noticed is many times, if you're together by God, then God gives you what you need. You may not know what you want, it's what you want, but he gives you what you need. Meaning this, I've seen some women 
um, in leadership that need that husband to kind of guide them, you know, to not do too much, to not overdo it. I've seen that. And many times I thought, well, that's kind of overbearing, maybe. But as I got to know the individual, all oh, why it was necessary. You get what I'm saying? For him to really, really be with his hand in that concerning her with her ministry. That's handling your wife according to me. You get what I'm saying? As to where um, some may have more liberty or have a husband that grants them more liberty. You get what I'm saying? But all, the thing about it is allowing God, because to me, your faith needs to work and be representative in your household first. You need to see God move in your house first. Meaning, if you feel like you're called to ministry, then you're praying. Of course, you need to have a prayer life. You get what I'm saying? You need to be praying that God would reveal to that man. You get what I'm saying? Um, because I believe you should still be in unity, regardless if you step into another phase, another level of ministry, or whatever it is, or if you're stepping into a greater position. I don't believe that God is going to leave all of us ignorant. He's not going to leave us out not knowing. You get what I'm saying? But I think the point is that many times uh, the husband doesn't pay attention to what God may be doing to the wife with the wife, and the wife may not be paying attention to what's going on with the husband. You can't have a every man for himself reality when you're in a match. If it's going to work, because to me, my biggest thing, my heart was in order to move forward in ministry, I don't want my marriage tore up while I'm trying to move in ministry. Because ultimately, as two ministers of the Lord, our marriage is representative of Christ's relationship with and so if there's a breakdown between myself and my husband as we're trying to do what we call the work of the ministry, then what we show when we break up and just depart from one another and do all of this on, on the back of ministry, then we're showing that, okay, I'm praying. Christ is disconnecting himself from the church, which we know is not true. We know that's not true. Mm. And so I do want to encourage every woman that may be in a predicament where you feel like, um, because sometimes when, when the man of is pastoring and he's looking so at the sheep, sometimes you may feel like you're left out. Um, I've seen first ladies like that. I need feeling like I need a prophecy from the man of God myself. I know that God is getting ready to do something with me, but it doesn't seem like he's picking it up. Okay, pray. Pray and ask God to reveal it. And God is faithful to reveal it at the appointed time. Even if you have to say, God, show your hand so that my husband be in sync with what I believe that you're saying. So we can be one. But see, we need to be speaking language. Even though we're husband and wife, me and mom finish each other's sentences. You know what I'm saying? We're we're in sync. We're in unity. So I'm a bit, I'm a stickler on that. And I feel and I've I've had to speak this to somebody. I'm gonna give you an example. I had a lady um, that came to me and she said um, God called me to preach. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, Okay. And next thing I know, then she turned around and said, Well, I'm gonna go and answer my call. And I said, Okay. And so she went and she preached one sermon, everything went good, and she went to preach again. Now, mind you, her husband was not even um, saved, not, not even a believer. And so the second time she went to preach, he said, wait a minute. He said, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. And so when she called me, and she was telling me about the incident, and I told her, I said, I have to agree with him. And she was like, what do you mean? I said, I knew that this would happen. I said, because I agree with him because God did not give that to him as well. You all were married before you went to preaching. I said, so you need to allow God, you need to see the faith of God bring him in. 
Because if you can't win him over through your chase conversation, which is the way that you carry yourself, then you're not going to anybody over when you preach either. Your faith has to begin in that household to see God maneuver and work things out so you'll have the, the confidence and the faith to know that God is with you when you go and preach to the world or wherever you feel like you're called to preach, right? So I'm a stickler on that. I believe in cultivating your faith within your circle, within your household. I saw God move in his ways within my household, with my children, my children to alignment. All of these things came into alignment while I moved forward for ministry. That gave me the confidence to know that God is with me. Amen. Wow. I think you need Amen. to. Amen. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. Yes, sure. You're a woman of God. You're watching us live on Facebook TV, New TV, Display TV, or you're connecting from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you're connecting from. You just had a very deep revelation from Prophetess Natasha Okwendo that your marriage is a replication of the Christ has with the church as such no matter the God is giving you as a the ministry you've got to ensure that your marriage is intact because that's you the edge to have a sound testimony that you are still connected to your husband like Christ is still connected to the church I mean that's a very powerful one all right next question goes to Pastor Mary Don Paul on this show I hope you are getting blessed mama tell us in this just giving to you. When you see ladies coming around, husband, pastor, how do you feel? Because we've seen a lot of women of God, you know, put up jealousy against opposite sex with their husband, and they begin to chase these ladies or women out of the church. How are you able to handle this and then keep with you a lot of numbers of women in the ministry? And you know, insecure, you're not feeling, you're rejecting, there's no qualms with you. Tell the girl, uh, Mommy Mary, uh, the Paul, how are you able to handle this? Okay, I think uh, she's frozen. All right, I'll throw the same question to Pastor Natasha while we're waiting for Pastor Mary and Paul to come up. Uh, Prophetess, can you tell us what's your counsel to women in ministry as to how to welcome, you know, the female gender around their husbands? You know, we know that God's name is jealous, and jealousy is a sign of love too. It becomes too much. It becomes envy, and this can be disastrous to the ministry of the husbands. So, what's your experience in this encounter to men pastor as to how to handle this in their husband's uh, ministry? Is she back on or did you want me to answer it? Well, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and answer it. Um, one of the things that I've learned, and like I say, is through uh, learning and experience. Because um, I've, I've dealt with that quite a bit. <laughs> um, I've learned to get engaged and get involved um, with with the women and I would you have to teach them um, meaning what their position is and who the pastor actually is and my thing is to really teach them and cultivate them because when I came up in ministry myself I viewed him my, my apostle was actually he's the same age as my father my biological father um, and they have a lot of similarities and I viewed him as a father Figure. And so I believe uh, cultivating the women to, for them to know that the pastor is more of a father figure to them 
to view him in that mind frame um, is vital. That way, and, and I say that because ultimately, um, the women that come into the ministry, they have to position themselves as and get to the place of being spiritual daughters. And so you have to give them and feed them and train them and teach them and cultivate in them the mindset of being a daughter within that ministry, right? And so I believe that is something that we should really be pushing as the first ladies or the co-pastors uh, ministry, the elders, the women in ministry, really cultivating them to position themselves to be poured into, to receive the outpouring. Because when you have the mindset of whether you're equaling yourself to view the man as you as a mate or, or somebody you could date or somebody you could deal with in that way, you really uh, abort yourself from getting the outpouring that you need to uh, be filled with what God needs to uh, push you into for your destiny and your purpose. And so... I me, I've seen a lot of women that go to church. I've seen women that go to church uh, because they're attracted to pastors and stuff like that. I've I've seen it all and I've dealt with it all. Just about when it comes to ministry and what I have learned is a uh, voice that God gives us, the authority that He gives us in the voice as women leaders within that house within that ministry. We are to cultivate the mindset that they have so they could succeed in reaching their full potential, their destiny. And so as I would say, uh, get in with those women, not to become familiar, not for them to become too familiar with you. Really get in with, them with a mothering spirit to cultivate them and to show them this is the way. This, this is how you get your anointing. This is this is how you position yourself for God to anoint you with power for what He has called you specifically to do. This is the mind, and I believe communication is key. Communication is key. That's why that's why I am a firm believer in the women in ministry, especially the first lady, having a voice, having a voice, being that you that you're there uh, and praying, you're getting in. Insight. You're getting, you're receiving insight on the sheep. You're receiving um, what is necessary. And you're actually being that example for them to follow. And so I think that you need to have a voice that you need to pour into them, whether you need to pull them, you know, whether there's a process that they must go through um, to cultivate them and get their mindset to become intercessors, to become powerful prayer warriors. And from that, God launching them into whatever else he made for them as women. But it starts with respect. And I think you have to cultivate that and you have to be a part of that. Amen. Because a lot of women don't know. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Prophetess. That's very powerful balance from Prophetess Natasha Okwendo. All right, Pastor Mary Dan Paul, this question is coming from Zimbabwe, from one Karo, is it Miyoro, Mi or something like that. Sorry, uh, the names from the East Africa is somehow tempting. So Karo is asking that as a female uh, pastor, how do you mentor a male gender? Like you have a son in ministry who is a male, and as a female pastor, so it's possible to mentor, you know, uh, a gender. Can you kind of female pastor, a male pastor in ministry with a blood relationship with him? Uh, what's your experience in that? And she, she wants you to answer that. Also, I'd like you to visit the question we, we just sent to you as regards handling the female gender ministry because we've seen you do that in big church, the church God has given to you and your husband. I don't want to know how you might handle that so to you Pastor Paul. Okay, um Sister Carol, thank you for asking. Yes, um if you pastor can mentor a male member 
or a tissue. You can mentor them. Um, I think the, the, the question I will ask is how does that um, take care of her son? We have our biological sons, we have um, boys who live with us and look up to us. And I can always say, um, to who is pure, all things are pure. First and foremost, it's God's work you are doing. You are there to mentor somebody as a spiritual mother or a spiritual mentor. And all you are supposed to do... Uh oh, I think her network from the northern part of Nigeria is a bit uh, challenging. It's here too, and uh, where is you know busy and the weather a bit uh, you know uh, dusty like that and all that. So uh, uh, I beg pardon when you want to speak a little bit to prophetess. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Bishop. Can you hear me? Yes, hey, yes. All right. So, for to mentor a male, a male, a male, um, a male member or a, a, a male person is to to set boundaries to know what you are called to do in that person's life. Concentrate on that and do just just that. There is nothing wrong in a female minister mentoring a male member or a male or a male, let me put it that way. Or a, there's nothing wrong in that you can mentor the person. It's like a female a, a woman um teaching a male student class there's really nothing in that so you can go ahead and do that but of course there are certain areas that if you begin to have challenges in those areas or you're not able to work with what that person is um looking up to or expecting from you that is why you have and who is your partner that you can always discuss with him and say this is what What's going on? Is asking this, or I need to do this because I'm a woman. I may not really know that aspect of it. And then your husband would advise you and tell you what to do, and then how to to help the person out. So yes, it's okay. And then to your question, are you a great bishop? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Yes, like Prophetess uh, Natasha said, um, for me, when it comes to the women in the ministry and the church, I believe one thing, get involved in the women's life, get involved in their lives, you know, responsive to them, get to know them and get to teach them the principles of God's word, like she said. And then and then, secondly, I, the question I would always ask is, um, if people keep asking, how do you cope with um, the female members, how do you cope with women around your husband, they, they, the, the question I keep asking or I ask them is, how does a woman marry to a gynecologist? How does she cope? Are you with me, sir? Mm -hmm. I, I am. Yeah, how does a woman marry to yes. a gynecologist to women and he sees their nakedness? And then he's married, he has a wife too. So, and then the wife goes, to, um, the wife sees her husband leaves home for work, and she knows that he's going to be attending to women, and he's going to be seeing all kinds of women in their nakedness. You know, he's attending to them by law, um, uh, medically. But how does she cope? It's it's for you to understand that number one, he misses your husband, you trust him, you love him, you know that he is going there to do his job and his assignment. You have big trust in that relationship. And then you need to understand that I have never heard of a ministry where I can only preach to the male members or the women can the woman can only be female members. It's male and female. And I understand that. This is my right. husband. He understands that God has called him to do this, and then he's born again. We have big trust, and you see, the members also watch, they observe, and they know. Like, like Pastor Natasha said, your home front is very important. You know, members know when a pastor and his wife has a very healthy relationship, and when they are a team and they are working together. You know, if a, if a girl is coming around my pastor, the, my husband, the first thing she needs to understand, or the first thing she's going to understand, is that we are close and then we are friends and that for anything she intends to do he's going to tell me that's my husband for you he was going to tell me i will get to know you know so they get they, they, they watch you they observe you they see relationships 
relationship that you're in. They know whether you're friends or not, or you're just pretending and doing your things. For me, when they come around, they know that I am very close with my husband. We are close. We are in partnership. We are friends. We talk. We relate and we communicate. And they know very well that if anybody is trying to play anything for me, he's going to say, this one, this is what she's trying to do. And because nobody or no woman will want to be embarrassed, you understand? Not that I'm fighting her or something. That this one, if you do anything with him, his wife is going to know about it. So they are also very careful. But like I said, like Pastor said, just be involved in this woman's life. Let them know you are their friend. Wow. And let them hear for them. That's too. a powerful At one. Point, uh, if you're going to be with you, then even going to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you much for that wonderful one. Uh, Paul, I'm Paul. All right. Uh, our next question is also coming from one other brother from Cameroon. One, uh, Mofo. Mofo is asking Prophetess uh, Asha Okwendo that how do you handle offenses in ministry? Of course, it's part of the question that I've asked much earlier that offenses are bound to come in ministry from your members, from, you know, co in ministry, co-pastors, how have you been able to offenses in ministry as a woman of God? As a woman of God, I, I feel like I have been processed to a level to not be so easily offended, right? Um, I say that because process, I've, my process was pretty rough. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Um, and I've come to learn, and there was a scripture that set me free, um, and I can't uh, remember exactly, but it says, when the glory of God rests on you, pretty comes with insults. And so what I have learned uh, being here is many people really don't know how to come at you or, or how to even handle you. Um, they may not understand the way you're wired or your way of thinking, um, especially when you are very, very uh, determined. Um, it comes with understanding a uh, human, uh, the human side, the human, because um, many times the people that we deal with, they need the spirit. Most times, most times the people that we're dealing with, they're not in the spirit. So when you have an understanding of that, you pretty much handle them according to what you discern. Right. And so I've had many times where and let me give you the example. One of the anointings that I carry is for deliverance ministry. And what I've learned when I carry this deliverance ministry, a lot of times it undresses different spirits that people may be battling with. Meaning they may be fine until they encounter somebody who has that anointing in God that can get them set free from whatever spirits have them bound. And so what I've learned through trial and error and walking out is that many times people are being undressed spiritually. And sometimes those spirits may out and they may attack or may say certain things to be offensive, but I've stood my ground. And many times when I've stood my ground, I've watched people go through deliverance and actually come back and apologize to me for when they felt like offensive. You know what I'm saying? Where they realized they were offensive. Sometimes, um, sometimes to stand your ground and you have to let God make sure you don't allow the offenses to set in you to the point of bitterness. Because bitterness can disqualify you from operating in your anointing like you need to. Um, I want to say that. That, that's one of the biggest enemies that is fighting against us as people of God, trying to get bitterness in our hearts towards people and how they've handled us in our processes to unforgiveness in our heart, knowing that that bench with God disqualifies us from really being used to the capacity that God wants to use us. So with that being said, I am knowledgeable of this. So that I'm knowledgeable of this, I know to allow and to break through into my heart instead of residence in my heart. Right? I don't let it get in. 
I pray about it. And many times now where I am in my maturity in Christ, I kind of laugh it off. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to let you that because I, I really don't have the energy or have time to focus on that. You get what I'm saying? And when I do it like that, God knows how to convict if he wants to convict. God, how to chastise if he wants to chastise. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen God chastise. I've seen people come back. And literally, I, and I'll give you this testimony. I was the head intercessor. So I used to, you know, uh, I was responsible for getting the church ready for prayer. This was in my home church in my early stages. And a young lady, um, she was going around saying something about me. I didn't even know it. She went to get in prayer and God told her she can pray. She needs to come and apologize to me. She came and broke down and apologized to me. She said, I said this and I said that about you and I'm sorry. She said, I couldn't even get in prayer until I did this. And you know how the scriptures say, go and lay down your gift and reconcile with your brother and then go pick your gift back up. So the scripture came to me as I heard her saying this, but as I walked away, I said, God, what was that all about? Because I didn't even know she had said anything negative about me. God said, because you live in the realm of prayer. And if she's going to enter prayer with me, then she needs to get that right with you. I convicted her. You get what I'm saying? So through a process of God doing things like this gave me the confidence to not allow offenses and different things to set in. Because it's not going to be beneficial to me to continue by God is calling me to you know that. Don't let, it, don't let it stick. You pray. If it's really bothering you, you pray, you cry out to God, and you give it over to God and let God handle it. You got to trust God to handle it. Amen. Wow. Wow. That's super amazing. That's super amazing. Uh, you just had, Mofo, you just had that answer that she has been processed to a point where she's not easily offended. In, and we've got to trust God for grace to get to that point where offenses no longer affect our activity or response in ministry. All right. That's a path. All right. Next to Pastor Mary, I've also known you. For many years, I've been to your ministry here in Nigeria. I've seen you work tag ministry as well as handle your civil job and handle family quite okay. So far, I feel like a super, and, and I want to handle to handle. The next question we have for you is: How have you been able to manage your family responsibility as well as? As balancing the ministerial assignment. Tell us, Mommy Mary and Paul, how you have been able to do this ministry. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> yes, people always ask me this question, and I'll always say in one word um, God's grace is sufficient. And like the scripture says, I can do things through Christ that strengthens me. Um, because I get to understand um what the basis are and what my priorities are and then i also get to tell myself that um it's an honor it's it's a pleasure to be a pastor's wife to be a mother and then to be a you understand i'm here um i'm co-pastoring the house of grace international church with my husband and i'm a mother i'm a wife and at the same time i'm a banker i work in the banking industry um, what I try to do is to see how um, I balance these three aspects of my life as a pastor's wife or a pastor, as a wife, and then as a banker. I try to ensure that um, when it's time to do banking, I do banking. Like, And then you know the hours is from 8 a.m., to 5 p.m. in the evening. So I know that from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the evening, I'm in the office, the bank attending to my customers. Yes, I don't forget the fact that I'm a pastor because um, I'm a pastor in the marketplace. And for every opportunity that God, God gives you, is also for you to use the opportunity and then preach Christ or transmit Christ to your customers. So I get to meet people who come into the banking industry and as I am 
um, rendering banking services to them. I'm also able to like talk Christ with them. I don't just go outrightly, but you know, from our conversations, you know, we begin to narrow down. And before you know it, Christ is preached. Either the person is already saved, and then we we say a word of prayer, or the person gives his life to Christ, and all of that. But um, God's grace has been sufficient for me. And then when I come back home. I know that I am a mother and I am a wife. You see, um, one of the things that Pastor Natasha was trying to talk about on home front, when talking about women in ministry who will always have issues with their husbands, not supporting them in ministry, it's because, you see, God has laid down the process and the procedures of doing things. You know, when he was talking in Ephesians chapter 5, when he was talking about wives being submissive, he said, wives be submissive. He didn't say wives who are not in ministry be submissive or wives who are not pastors who are not bishops who are not evangelists who are not prophets be submissive he said wives generally to every female woman that is married to a man he said be submissive so when i come home i understand that here i am a wife and i'm expected to do my as a wife, I'm expected to still prepare my husband's meals. I'm expected to still attend to my husband. I'm expected to be responsive to him and to the children. So I get to do that. When I'm in church, I now know that yes, in this in this space, I am now a pastor and I am now a pastor's wife. So I function in that capacity part time at that moment as a pastor's wife. But the moment I step into the bank on a Monday morning, I'm a banker. A banker in Christ. The moment I step into my home, I'm a wife. And a then the moment I step into the church, I'm a pastor and a pastor's wife. So I'm able to differentiate one assignment from the other part time so that I don't go home and then pastor is well, I, I was, I was saying, no, I'm pastor I'm, 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 I'm anointed and ordained. And then my husband is saying, Mama, where is my food now? I'm pastor I don't make, I don't cook food anymore. I want to talk to you. No, 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 I'm pastor Mrs. No. I get to understand that when I'm at home, I'm his wife. I am not pastor at that moment. I am his wife. Yes, there are times that we get to switch. Maybe when we are praying or we are discussing some things of the spirit, fine. But I get to know that at this moment, my husband wants his wife. And I appear a wife. You understand what I'm trying to say? So when we're in church at this moment, he wants his helpmate, a co-pastor. I appear a co-pastor. So I do what is expected of me at that point in time. So for me, knowing my different responsibilities, knowing how to switch from one to the other, as at when do and as, as at when expected or how or when I'm expected to do that, I do that conveniently and ensure that one does not affect the other so that there will be balance and so that everything will go well. Because you see, uh, most women will always have problems in ministry when... Wow. Wow. The what she does is to give balancing. Uh, when it is time for banking, she do banking. When it is time to do a uh, home uh, front, she's a wife and a mother at home. And when it comes to ministry, she's a co-pastor to her husband. A very powerful one. All right, one more question. Do we have questions like I just received? Five questions, but because of time, we're going to ask one more question to Ms. Natasha window and I'll ask one more question to Mary, and they'll have a closing remark. And you are getting the watching us from your TV set. We're still live. This is Leadership Podcast with Bishop Ibro Zion. With me are my two guests today, full time, Professor Natasha Okwendo from Florida, United States of America, and Pastor Mary Dan Paul, all the way from Kaduna, uh, Nigeria. I mean, we're having an amazing time. So, Prophet Natasha Okwendo, I want to ask our last question on the show today. Even though we have a pile of questions and we are requesting that we have you next week, of course, Pastor Natasha will be here next Saturday. The question is, how do you advise a woman to handle the issue of, you know, from her husband? 
husband. I know this question earlier. But this time around, God is naturally opening up the ministry of the wife. That's because naturally tend to acceptability than men. Recently, my wife preached in one state here in Nigeria, and then she was said to one of the largest in Nigeria. This is a platform I've been trusting God to be on, but on, you know, just like that, they invited me to preach there. So it means my wife is going to gain acceptance that I have not gained. And then I am never intimidated. So to tell us what could be your counsel to husbands out there, to male pastors out there concerning the ministry of their wives, soon as they begin to see God promoting the ministry of the wife, how do you advise them to handle it? Um, I would advise them to be in unity with it. Reason being because God spoke a word to me um, some years ago, and he said that we were entering into the time of the woman. Um, and I just kind of want to share that a little bit. Um, during that time, we saw Kamala Harris take vice president seat. Um, and these are different confirmations that he used to symbolize that he was doing something with us as women. Um, we saw the statute of limitations um, be pushed back for women who had been sexually assaulted and violated um, to be able to come forth. And now we're still seeing those women, women being vindicated all over the world who had been in the past sexually violated and nothing was done. Um, and so we're seeing God move like this. What I need the husbands to understand is in Proverbs 31, it talks about the husband's name being known in the gate. And just like Pastor Mary mentioned that, um, being able to change hats. I call it a woman of many hats. This is, this is something in my next book that I'm actually working on now. But wearing those many hats and knowing how to wear the hat and when to take off the hat, right? Um, me personally, my thing, what I've learned is with those many hats, we look at Esther, her leaning into position, right? And as she came into her position, his enemy was Haman. She exposed that. But when you look Take her. Here she is going into her queenship, her queenly position. Then her uncle Mordecai, her Mordecai, was able to take his rightful position. So what the men got to understand is, is that God is in the wife to forefront, and she may be the one to make his name known in the proper it talks about how the husband's name is made known in the gate it talks about how the children husband look up and call her blessed right so we're in time where god is raising up women um and i'm i'm telling you one of the powerful things right now is a woman who believes god said about her to the point to the point that she obeys god's plan for her life Right now, when she gets in that position, this is when the wifely hat or just being a woman kicks in. When God positions you, you open up the way. You open up the way. You never know. There may be that is being paid to open up. When S paid the way and got in her position, Mordecai was exalted to a position. So, and, and then you look at the Deborah Rocks, so we're going to have men and women collaborations that are only going to work when women take their position, right? You had Prophetess Deborah in the Bible, she had her position, and then you had the Rock who was the military or whatever, but he had to collaborate with Deborah to win the victory and had to give Deborah the uh, accolades for winning that victory. Deborah got exalted. She got recognized. And so I believe this is something that God is doing um, in this time. These different collaborations are taking place, whether they're husbands and wife collaborations, whether they're collaborations with um, different men and women in business, ministry, whatever the demographic. But sometimes it takes that woman and the reason being, when you look at it, God in Genesis 3 15, he put enmity between the woman and Satan that her seed would crush his, crush his head, but his, his, uh, he would bruise the heel 
of the seed. So the woman is the one who gives birth to the new move. She's the one that gives birth. And sometimes God uses her to open up the way. But that's why he uses women that have what? That uh, submission or that subjection to him. And if there is a husband or man in their life, or if they have a spiritual father or connection in their life, that when they get in the position, they know to open up the See, that's what breakdown, breakdown. See, you have to know that you're a team. My husband already knows that we're a team. And whenever I uh, break open, we've done it for each other. My, my husband opened up for me. Uh, um, he got invited to the prison. And I used to love I'm just giving this as an example. He got invited to the prison. Pray, and God told him to let them know he was going to bring me in the message. He music. And there was about uh, three guys. We had to do two sessions that day. 150 guys. The music. I preached. Powerful message. The atmosphere shifted. God moved. The second session, they had to open up the overflow room. And this time it was like almost 700 men. I'm in a men's prison as a woman speaker. My husband did his music. The guys who were there in the first session, they played instruments. Very talented. But back in him while he did his music, I came and preached the message. Do you know uh, there were men of all type of religions there. He had some Muslims and stuff got down on the ground and started worshiping. People would get the floor. They're not even supposed to do that. The spirit of the Lord had arrested the atmosphere to the point that the warden afterwards, he looked at me and said, what man or woman are you? I've never seen God do something like this. They didn't even do God, God shut it all down. Right? Some deliverance and see all of that. So I'm saying that to say you have to know that you're a team. You're a team. You're one. When they see me, they see my husband. When they see my husband, they see me. That's right. We're one. And however uh -huh. God decides it, that door opens and we represent God together or separately. It doesn't matter. But it's all for the Father to get the glory. And that has to be the mindset. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, very prepared. We don't know what we're going to use it is. Natasha Wendell. All right, so we'll be going to Pastor Mary Dampol. The last question with a line of question because of time. I've just received a signal that time is Pastor Mary Dampol. You want to say a remark to our viewers around the world? You want to say something to over 400 million of our viewers from different parts of the world? Yes, <laughs> um, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And then I want to tell you that um, the grace of God is sufficient for every woman out there. I know most women are running away from marrying pastors because they feel it's a very challenging. But I want you to know that grace is sufficient. It's an amazing, it's an amazing opportunity, oh, um, a great honor to be married to a pastor. So we welcome all of you on board. Grace is sufficient, and we're here to support one another. Thank you, Pastor Bishop. Um, um, Ibu for having us. Thank you, Pastor Natasha. Nice meeting. Thank you, Ma. All right. Uh, before I say something, I want to bring up also Prophetess Natasha Okwindo for a closing remark to our viewers around the world. Yes, woman of God. Um, yes, for all the beautiful women who are watching around the world and everybody who is listening in, I want you to know that God is concerned about you, um, that God, it is your time. I know you feel, you feel it, and it is legitimately God for whatever area that he is doing something in your life. And knowing, knowing that if you are looking to become or marry into pastorship, that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to his power that is at work on the inside of you. Don't look down, but look that he's with you. Greater is he within you than he that is in the world. And it can be done gracefully. God can bring everything to pass for you and your man of God. 
you. Appreciate y'all listening. And it's me and Pastor Mary, beautiful woman of God. Thank you, um, Bishop um, Igo, for having on the Leadership Podcast. It has been amazing. Can't wait to come back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's a uh, if you are around the world, very much for staying tuned with us. Uh, today's uh, uh, episode is so amazing. We had a woman from the United States of America and the person of Natasha O'Quinn. Like if you can see, she has this powerful book called Invitation. If you're watching from any social media platform, just check the comment section. You're going to have a link to her book and to her, her landing page or her sales page. You for that book. You Pastor Mary, Paul, all the way from Kaduna, Nigeria. Thank you so much for being the best to us on today. I will be your host, Ibro Ezion, probably known as the Eagle. And on this side of us, space, the Digital Bishop. I'm going to be back next Saturday live at 3 p.m. M was time and it's going to be a power in God's presence as our prophetess Natasha Okwengo coming back next Saturday alongside with Pastor Laura Martins of Dr. Kai Lance Martins from Texas, you know, America. It's going to be a super power time and get what that will be our first leadership broadcast in January 2024. So I'm saying to every viewer around happy new year in advance. I love you all. Thank you so much for of this program. Before we go, enjoy this music coming from me to you. Titled Yaboni, we are at Jubuki, the Pope Ricardo Prince, all the way from Kaduna, Nigeria. Thank you so much for being part of this. TV, keep watching new view TV. Keep watching that as plenty. God bless you. Bye bye. From the bottom of my heart, I've come to Redamaka, Wakaya. Even if I had a billion dollars, you know, go do to praise your name. You're my keeper, you're my strong tower, my only defender, my ever present help. You are the move and never be. Oh